Hey everyone, my name is Arya and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about five common mistakes a lot of people make when they're buying shares into the stock market. And these mistakes are generally made by a lot of beginners. And I myself, when I started out buying shares, I made these mistakes. So I want to share these mistakes with you guys and hopefully you guys can avoid making these same mistakes and make better decisions when investing in stocks. For those who are watching my video for the first time, please do subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting a lot more videos about different stock markets, stock market trends, and also about investing. So do subscribe if you're interested in those sort of stuff. And for those who are already subscribed and watching this, thank you um, for the love and support you guys have given me. It's amazing to see that. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Number five in my list of things to avoid when investing in shares is investing based on the stock index. So what do I mean by that? So you probably notice that whenever you open up a stock, whether it's on a stock app or on Google, you'll notice that there's a line which goes upward and downward. And basically that line is the index. Now, of course, if it's going up, it's meaning it's going on a positive note. If it's down, meaning it's a negative. Now stocks generally tend to give you negative or positive over the long term. And typically that's an indication of how the stock is performing in the market. But that doesn't mean that you should purely invest based on that index. I've made this mistake when I started off. Like I invested in a stock called ZNO because purely I was like, oh, the stock is doing really well. It's picking up without doing any research, without knowing what the stock is. I put in some money. The next thing I knew, oh, it went down. And that is what people call FOMO, which is a fear of missing out. So you want to avoid things like, do it like that and generally stay away from purely investing based on the stock index. Because yes, you get a feeling like, oh, I want to invest because this is going up. I can let's take the plunge and invest. But that's typically not the best methodology to go with. And I would definitely avoid investing based on the stocks index. Now, this brings me to point number four. Always do your research when investing in stocks. Do not invest in stocks unless you've done your research on that particular company. So what do I mean by this? So when I talk about research, I'm talking about few things here. So you first of all, when you're doing an investment in the stock, it's investing in the company end of the day. So you got to read about that company. You got to know what are they doing in the market. So you got to figure out their business model. That's the first step. Two is figure out whether these people are doing well in the market by as in their announcements. So some they have this section where they release announcements and what are the announcements about? What are they actually doing? That's the second thing. And third thing is also research about the management. So management is a key factor in a company because those are the people who are running that company. So get to know the management by researching them online. So one thing which I personally like to do is go to that company's website. And in the company's website, there's usually an investor portal. So you click into the investor portal and then it tells you all about the investment section for a potential investor. Like what is the management? What are the announcements? What is the company even about? What are they doing? So it gives you a bit more insight on what that company is. So always do your research when you're investing in a stock because without knowing what that company is doing, you do not have a clear picture of whether this stock is going to go up or whether the stock is going to go down and it can cause you losses if you do not do your research process properly. Now, of course, there's a lot more other websites out there. Like I personally also like to use this website called Motley Fool, which is really good for Australian stocks and also sometimes watch into hot copper and see what discussions are. Now, I'm no way promoting these websites. They're not paying me to do that, but that's generally what I do when I'm researching into stocks. This brings me to point number three in my video where actually I've noticed quite a bit of people do not follow this properly and fail to do this. It is following a market trend. A lot of people fail to follow a market trend and sometimes it can lead you to make bad decisions when it comes to investing in stocks. So, um, for example, right now we've got the pandemic which hit us. So of course, the pandemic has made a lot of test stocks go upward, downward and made the whole market volatile. But there are some obvious things during the pandemic. For example, you've got stocks which are doing really well and some stocks which aren't doing so well. You've got like, for example, online based companies 
or tech-based stocks, which are doing really well during the pandemic. But then you've got like, for example, airline companies or airline industry, which isn't doing so well. So what I would tend to do is not invest in the airline, but invest in tech stocks right now, given currently what's happening in the current market. And furthermore to that as well, if you look at like airline stocks, yes, it did have a current dip and it has gone down, but does it still make sense to invest? I would refrain from that simply because right now during the pandemic, we don't know how far off we are through a vaccine or we don't even know when that vaccine is coming out. And right now the airline industry is struggling because there's no one who wants to travel. So of course the revenue will be down. And me taking the risk of investing in that stock just because it's come down and potentially can go up is a bad move because right now there's a lot of uncertainty. So that company can declare bankruptcy, worse comes worse, or that company can even go further down in stock value. So there's a lot of risks involved when you're not up to date with what's happening currently in the market. And if you wanna keep yourself updated with the market, what's happening, like there are a lot of websites out there which give like updates. Like I personally try to use a lot of websites to find out what's currently happening. But one very good website to check out is Hot Copper. Like I have an account in there personally. I just go online. I check about the most recent discussions which are happening. It's more of a forum base so you can discuss with people and find out what is good, what is good, bad and make better decisions when investing in stocks. And of course, there's a lot of other places where you can get information. Like for right now, you can subscribe to my channel and I'll be posting you guys a lot more info and a lot more updates about the current market and current trends which are going on in the stock. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe to my channel. But end of the day, it does come down to keeping yourself updated with what's currently happening in the market. So this brings me to point number two in my video, which I've seen a lot of people make this mistake is they invest in the stock market with money that they cannot afford to lose. So what do I mean by this? So think about it like this. You have $5,000 in total saved up and you're planning to put $2,500 into the stock market with that money saved up. So that's 50% of your actual money which you have. So you put that in the stock market and let's say it goes up. Well, that's great, good on you. But now what if it goes down? Well, you're losing a significant amount of or portion of your savings and it's gonna make you um, that's going to affect you in short term and in long term and going to make you emotionally vested with that stock. Now, when you're emotionally vested with that stock, what happens is it makes you paranoid. It makes you stressed out. And what it also causes you is causes you to sell that stock or make unwise decisions when it comes to that stock. So that's why I always invest in money that you can afford to lose. That's how I like to invest in the stock market. So for example, let's say, you have $50,000 now and you're planning to put $2,500. So $2,500 does go down. You're not affected by it, but if it does go up, hey, you're getting a decent amount of money back and that way you're not really emotionally invested and you will make better decisions when it comes towards your investing strategy. This brings me to point number one in my video of top mistakes I've seen people make when whether it's beginners or even people who are a bit more experienced when it comes to investing is selling your stock at the wrong time. So in a broader terms, of course, end of the day, you buy shares, so eventually you can sell it off. Now, a lot of people, what they do is they don't sell it at the right time. Now, when I talk about the right time, there's never, you're never gonna know time the market correctly. So for you to be able to sell a stock, you should never sell a stock when you incur losses. So that's the most important thing to remember. If you have made losses on the stock where the harsh reality is sometimes when you make investments, it doesn't play out as you expect it and you can incur losses. So what you do is you do not sell that stock even if you incur losses. You hold on to it, you keep it in your portfolio because let's say in a month's time it goes down, in two months time it goes down, but eventually it's gonna come back right up again. And when I say right back up again, it can come slightly higher. It can also come back to its original valuation which you purchased in at. And even if it does go down, you will not be emotionally vested, so you will not have the fear of, okay, now there's a significant amount of money invested, or I need that money, let me pull out the stock. You can keep it in there. Keep it in there for a year, maybe even two years, it'll eventually bounce back up. Yes, it's not the ideal situation, but the harsh reality is stocks do tend to go down from time to time if you make unwise decision. So 
that's my number one rule. And I always, even if I'm incurring losses, I hold on to stocks for long term. And hey, maybe after a while they might make a great announcement and it might plummet back up and it might go double, triple as well. You don't know. So that is something to be aware of when you do make your decisions based on stocks. These are the five top mistakes people make when it comes to stock investing. And as long as you follow these steps or avoid doing these things, then you're bound to make better decisions when it comes to investing in stocks. And it's all about having a good strategy in place. So as long as you avoid doing these things, you'll have a proper strategy in place and you'll be more successful when it comes to investing. And generally when you're investing, Think of it more as a long term than short term. Yes, there's going to be short term gains more than long term gains sometimes. But always when you're making a decision, think about it more in a long term perspective than short term perspective, even if you're holding it for short term. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, it means a lot to me if you show me your support by subscribing. And I'll be posting a lot more videos about investment strategies, about uh, financial education and about different stock markets, stock market trends, and also about personal growth and personal development. So please subscribe to my channel and until the next video, take care. Bye bye.